Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, happy Wednesday. Um, thank you so much for joining again this Wednesday. Hi, TT. Thanks for joining the chat with the uh, the Celebrate Emote. Yay. Hi, for now. Thank you so much for joining today also. And hello, Informed Flea. <laughs> um, so, uh, Today, the setup is a little bit different. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so uh, today's, uh, ooh. <laughs> um, okay, I'm getting distracted because I'm uh, at my parents right now down in LA. Uh, it's really nice to be able to see my parents. Uh, I haven't seen them in like nine months. Uh, because of the pandemic. Um, but yeah, we're visiting for the week. Um, and so you might notice that some things are a little bit different. Um, mainly that uh, I uh, have everybody's chat on, I don't know if you can see, um, on my iPad. And that's how I am following along. Um, and so uh, if I keep looking down, it's because I'm checking the chat and I'm checking that the stream is going well. Um, uh, so also, uh, my parents were really nice and they like uh, implemented or they like bought and we like put up a mesh network. So um, the Wi-Fi has been better than usual, but it's still like not the fastest. I think it's like 80 up. No, actually, it's 80 down, which is, like, kind of slow, but, like, it's 60 megabytes up, which I've, 60 or 70 up, which I, is, like, much better than what I get at home. So, uh, hopefully, the stream will go fine. Um, and hello, Uma, to uh, Jesus, Mark, um, and... Uh, Martin PSD says aptly named Twitch streamer. Um, okay, and accelerate or ooh accelerator. Ah, I like your handle. It says hello. Um, so yeah, hi. Um, it's been a week and a half. Uh, we had last week off, and today uh, I want to take it pretty casual. Um. And oh yeah, I think I set today's stream as a just chatting. Um, we're not going to be doing any coding today because honestly, I'm on my laptop um, and I don't have like my usual like setup. So it's going to be a little bit hard um, to try to do any coding. So we're going to just do a casual just chatting um, thing. Um, and uh, ooh, okay, so for today, uh, the kind of theme um, the exploration, the data exploration I wanted to do is I've been thinking a lot about this uh, recently about um, voter suppression and everything that's been going on with the USPS. Um, I'm very uneducated about this topic. Um, so, and when I look for data and try to explore it, that's how I kind of teach myself about a topic. So um, for today, uh, I... Yeah, so that's what I wanted to try and do today. Um, and I already got some uh, kind of suggestions on where to look. So mainly I'm very much um, curious about kind of what's been happening with the USPS. And because um, I, I saw in the news that um, there's been that a lot of the funding cuts um that were planned will actually be delayed till after the election, which is great news, but also not that great news, I guess, because it's still happening. And um, again, this is like my uneducated, like, <laughs> this is kind of what I've been uh, seeing in the news. Um, but uh, I also read that there's already been uh, many, like, kind of um, collection uh, boxes that have already been dis been dismantled. There's been um, uh, sorting machines that have been dismantled, and so uh, Will um, Will actually pointed me in the direction of this Washington Post article. So I wanted to take this hour to um, hopefully learn together. Like hopefully um, you'll know much more than me, and you'll teach me. Uh, but yeah, so I have some articles uh, pulled up already. So I think the focus is going to be we're going to 
um, be reading through some of these articles and looking at the visualizations in them and trying to understand from those. Um, and also, um, oh, Martin says, P.S. referring to your handle attempt.compliment. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Um, uh, but my handle is actually my, uh, my handle is actually my, um, my initials. So, uh, it's a, yeah. Um, and also I want to mention, um, that, uh, I don't think anybody can hear this, but I can hear this really well, which is, um, the, my laptop as usual is going like crazy. Um, yep. <laughs> so, yeah, and I've I've only started OBS. The only things I have running, you guys can see, is OBS. I have QuickTime to uh, mirror my iPad in a bit. Um, I'm also using my iPad to kind of catch up on the stream today. Um, and then Chrome and uh, my Spotify, and that's it. But my poor 2015 laptop. So um, as we talked about in our previous stream, like a week and a half ago, um. I've drawn my second emote uh, for for my channel, and it is my poor <laughs> my poor laptop. Here it is. Um, so I don't think um, <laughs> Health Center says big fan, big fan, and I'm not sure if that is a uh, <laughs> play on the fact that my laptop's fan is like going like crazy. But DT says love the emotes. Thank you. Um, I don't know if it will look as good at the like very small resolution that's going to be on uh, in the chat, but hopefully um, it will be just as cute and hopefully it will be approved by Friday because I think it's not yet approved. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing this yesterday. My poor laptop, my poor crying laptop. Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to mention before we got started. Um, but I guess before we get started, I want to ask how everybody's been doing. It's been a week and a half since we had the stream. So um, if there's anything new going on, um, my laptop fan is so loud that it's distracting. <laughs> um, it is also super hot in California right now. There's like a heat wave. Um, and so I think it's like 90 something degrees right now. Um, unfortunately in the Bay Area, apparently there's been like some wildfires that have started. Um, again, yeah, it's very hot, extremely hot right now. Um, so, uh, if I get distracted or if I can't think straight, it's because of how hot it is today and has been this week. Hopefully it will be better by Friday, but yeah. Okay. So let's get started for today um so i think the very first one i was going to look at um is this one from the new york times um and so uh oh yeah let me just say um so some of the things that i wanted to uh that i was curious about um is where mail and ballots are allowed um where the polling places are so like um and and essentially kind of how easy of access um, our polling places um, and what's happening with the USPS. Um, I also, after I tweeted that, uh, I realized like another thing that might be good is to look at the number of ways to vote in a certain county. So I think, I think, um, I'm not sure if I want to eventually turn this into a visualization, but um, I think, yeah, I think I want to be looking by county. In a county. So that's why I have this New York Times article pulled up. Um, oh my gosh. Pranav says, was 104 in Bay Area on Friday? Kind of hazy as well. Yeah, so we're, we, we escaped. We didn't escape. Um, we drove down to LA on sunday and that was really hot i think when we were leaving it was like 90s or 100 or something um and then yeah uh it 
I think starting last Friday, it was really hot. Oh, uh, yeah. So actually, last last week we had.、Uh, I I didn't do any streams last week because I was、uh, recording a workshop for front end masters, um, and uh, I, that was so intense. <laughs> um. Ooh, oh, thank you so much to Nerdy Curious for hosting my stream. Um. Yeah. So、uh, <laughs> last week,、uh, yes, okay, sorry.、Uh, last week、uh, I was、um, a recording workshop, and it was like four hours of setup on Monday.、Um, the、uh, it was like they had sent over all these equipment of、uh, all these lighting and a whole backdrop and、um, the camera、uh, and like. A、podium, like the the box turned into a podium. It was super intense. It took us like four hours to set up and do tech check, and then、uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we recorded four hours each. And thankfully, it was like split into those three days because there is no way I could have handled like eight hours of recording per day. That's that's usually the、um, Amount of the number of hours in when、um, we used to do the recordings on site in their Minneapolis office,、um, it would be like a whole eight-hour day. But、um, I knew that like like right now doing it remotely, I would just feel exhausted, like talking to myself essentially for like four、uh, for eight hours. So we have four hours of recording. So I guess it was like twelve hours total, and then.、Um, Yeah,、uh, I don't know where I was going with this. I guess I was just saying that, like, oh, oh,、uh, I know what I was going with this. Okay, so by Friday, um, we got a heat wave in the Bay Area, um, and uh, so then PG and E like had rolling outages. PG and E is the gas and electric provider for California, um, had rolling outages to, I guess, uh, because because of the incre- increased demand for. Um, because of the heat, and so we had an outage Friday night for like an hour, and I was like, "Oh, thank goodness this outage wasn't during the workshop, or else, yeah, or, or else that would have been just that would just have been too much." But yeah, the workshop went really well. I'm I'm really proud of the、uh, workshop materials that I put together. Oh, the workshop was、uh, introduction to D three and SVG.、Um, And I have put together like these、uh, eight observable notebooks.、Uh, so when、um, when I clean them up a little bit more, there's like my last notebook.、Um, I want to clean it up a little bit. But once I clean them up,、um, I'll be sure to share it.、Um, so it's、um, I'm quite proud of them.、Um, so yeah, it's a.、Uh, um, Yeah, and then once I do that, I'll share it, and you can take a look.、Uh, yeah, so that's what I've been working on.、Uh, I was lacking so much sleep that、uh, this whole.、Um, I think I've just spent from Friday to basically yesterday trying to recover on sleep,、um, and then Friday afternoon I also had to Thursday Thursday afternoon after my last recording we had to like then take down. Let me see if I can like. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of our living room. I'm gonna do it the like super getaway, where I'm just gonna like show it to you.、Uh, I'm gonna show it to you just on my phone, <laughs> which I don't know if you even be able to see anything. Actually, I guess I can just airdrop this. Um. Let me see. Let's see. Did that work? Yeah, we had to tear down, um, on for the、uh, for the workshop Thursday afternoon, and then Friday I had to like do a recording for a talk. So,、um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So this is like what our. Uh, living room look like what is not pictured. So yeah, there we go. So there's the camera and the lights and the backdrop, and it's so funny because like our living room is so 
um, get so much light that we actually had to hang these uh, blankets <laughs> from the back so that it would block out all of the natural light. Yeah, so then we had to tear this down. And then on Friday, uh, I had to record like another talk. But yes, so exhausted last week, um, but recovering this week. Um, and uh, oh, DT says it's also way too hot here in Germany and living on the fifth floor. Oh my God, that does not sound like fun. Um, yeah, there's um, this conversation actually really reminds me of, I think it was a New York Times piece that was um, about um, like climate change like 40 years or like when you were born or um it was something like um the number of extremely hot days um like the number of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or like 40 degrees Celsius or something um when you were born versus now um it was a really great piece um I can't remember the Uh, I can't remember. Oh, there we go. How much hotter is your hometown than when you were born? Um, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I think if I just do this in my regular. There we go. Um, so this one is an article okay let me let that load because my laptop is just already really angry um by uh, gilliam hi gilliam thanks for joining the chat um martin says ideas since they suspect that tr that trump is subtaging the usps to limit voting and thus help his campaign it'd be cool to see how usps changes differ between safe states and battleground states yes so actually for this particular one one of the um ideas I had was being able to see, uh, wanting to see where, um, uh, where uh, services have been dismantled and uh, compare it against how that area voted in 2016. And also potentially, oh, also the two, two ideas I had was comparing that to um, the demographic of the area and like income or race um, and also by how they voted in 2016. So that was some of the ideas I had. Um, and Nerdy Curious said, love your streams, hashtag stat nerds unite. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, Anna. Thank you for joining today too. Um, and uh, Accelerator says, I attended your workshop. It was great. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Uh, and Gilliam says, oh, hey, backstage. Um, <laughs> Accelerator says, wow, that setup looks elaborate. It was. It was very impressive. That box um, that, like, doubled as my, oh, what is not pictured in there is this, like, big gaming laptop that, where um, they kind of remote controlled everything. Like, they remote controlled the lights and they remote controlled the stream recording. It was really cool. Um, but, yeah, like, that the box that came it came in was like 120 pounds it was intense um and i said i wanted to attend too but i couldn't make it unfortunately um it's okay because it's been recorded and um i think maybe you can access it still maybe uh and and for sure it will get turned in like they'll like edit it and um they'll be it will be put up on um the website and i think it takes it usually takes them like maybe two months to fully kind of um go through and edit it so um you'll definitely be able to watch it then um yeah uh accelerator says definitely check out the notes books from the workshop dt sent something empty i don't know um yeah okay so hopefully this has loaded by now um and yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. So it was most of us can expect to see more days when we hit 90 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. See how your hometown has changed. Um, so I'm not going to enter my hometown um, in to my uh, live stream. Um, but let's just uh, take a look at uh, San Francisco. OK, 
California, and、um, I'm gonna give a birth year. Oh! Hmm. I wonder if something. That's. Okay, let's try New York then. I wonder if something broke? But okay. New York area could. Actually, maybe. Um. Ooh! Hi, Amy! Thank you for joining today, too! Um. Okay, so. New York, New York area could expect 10 days. Uh. And then. Today, it can expect 11 days at or above 90 degrees. And then by the time you're 80, models show that there could be 26 of these very hot days. The likely range is between 18 and 42 days.、Um, and then it kind of goes into、um, some of the most affected areas, I think, in,、um, in the world. And so the first time I saw this, it was very, yeah. Could expect、um, Jakarta, Indonesia could expect five months of 90 degree weather on average in 1960. Wait, what, what did it say? Oh, wow, by the end of the century, such heat may last for most of the year. Yeah, the first time I saw this one, this article, it was very, I, I think it just put climate change into such perspective for me.、Um, and it said, New Delhi could go from just under six months of 90 degree heat to up to eight months.、Um, yeah, very much、um, worth checking out from the story perspective as well from like a, like a data visualization perspective of、um, how, to, how to tell a data driven story in a very kind of impactful but like personalized way. Um, so, yeah, very much recommend.、Uh, the article is called How Much Hotter Is Your Hometown Than When You Were Born?、Um, and I don't know if it was that article or not, but、uh, it's definitely making my laptop go like crazy. Okay, so、yeah. today let's go through this one. So, I had to do some Googling beforehand about、um, what absentee voting. <laughs> Is this is how uneducated I am?、Um, so that's how I learned that.、Um, so I'm in California, so、uh, I just get my ballots mailed to me, which is really, really nice. But then、um, it does say absentee voting allowed. And what I read into was that absentee voting、um, is when someone may or may not be able to get to the physical polling station so they can request for an absentee ballot. But then this 57%. Um, oh, thank you so much for subscribing, Anna. Thank you so much for tuning in, always, and subscribing.、Um, so,、uh, yeah, so what I learned is that this 57% means that、um, they can.、Uh, They can ask for an absentee ballot, but、uh, does not need to、um, provide an excuse. And then、um, this 22% is that if they ask for absentee voting, then they have to provide a reason why. And、um, I also read that there were many places that are like accepting COVID 19 as a valid. Reason and excuse for absentee voting. But、um, what I hadn't been able to kind of finish reading and researching on is like、mm-hmm. which states are allowing that and which states、uh, may not be.、Um, but yeah, so I started looking at this article.、Um, I also really,、um, so I think sometimes we talk about, you know,、um, Visualizations should be very clear and communicative about、uh, the limitations of its data and, or its data set. And I really appreciate、uh, these kinds of notes that's like Montana authorizes counties to mail ballots to all voters, but in counties that opt not to, voters will still need to apply for an absentee ballot. So, like having these kinds of like little notes. Um, to say, like, to, to kind of give little exception to the visualization 
or little, I guess, like um, little notes about the data set, um, I think is really, really helpful. Yeah. So another thing that I didn't know was um, that uh, this kind of policy was at the state level. For some reason, I thought it was at the county level. Um, but I guess that, and, and I guess to that point, that's, that's why Montana is, um, it says in Montana that uh, counties might opt not to. Um, so we're just going to try and go through the visuals part today, just because we don't really have the time to read through everything together. But um, uh, I will, um, but uh, the uh, article itself is the New York Times where Americans can vote by mail in the 2020 elections if you want to like follow along or read on your own. Um, oh, um, thank you, uh, anonymous, anonymous gifts, uh, sorry, anonymous sub gifter. Thank you so much for gifting, um, a sub to Anna Codes. Um, and then, um, Ben Oldenburg says there is a project that came out recently to crowdsource the status of mailboxes in the U.S. Ooh, I would love to know what that project is. And um, please let us know if you remember the um, remember the name of that. So let me try and um, so. Management of service status. Okay, let's see. So this one is, yeah, mail collection box. View PDF. Show me view PDF. Um, oh, what the OIG. So wait, hold on. Let me look at when this was. This was September. Oh, September 2017. Okay, never mind. Um, okay. That might not be exactly what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna try and just like um, go through this faster because there's also this one that I want to go through with you, which is um, apparently the Washington Post. Um, yeah, this is the tweet. So it said that um, Washington Post uh, got USPS data um, showing at least 671 mail sorting machines have been removed since June um, and sorting reduction in national mail sorting capacity of 21 million pieces per hour. Um, so yeah, I wanna make sure that we have the chance to take a look at this. Um, and I do think that eventually I will want to turn this into some sort of like a visualization or like a kind of like a visual exploration um, tool. So let's take a look at this. Um, so this one says, mail voting rules for the 2020 election, um, ballots mailed, an absentee allowed for all, and an excuse required. So I do wonder um, what the difference between this one and the previous one is. So maybe, uh, maybe this will tell me some context. All states allow at least some mail voting, but some will make it more accessible to voters than others. In nine states in DC, every registered voter will be mailed a ballot, ballot um, ahead of the election. And these 34 states, voters can cite, ah, okay, that's helpful to know. So in 34 states, voters can cite the coronavirus as a reason to vote absentee, or they can cast absentee ballots without specifying a reason. So that's thus far 9 and 34. So we have 43 states. And in 9 states, did I do my math correctly? 9 plus 34, that's 43, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> In nine states, every registered voter will automatically be mailed an application to request an absentee ballot. Okay. 
in 25 states, voters will need to procure an application for an absentee ballot themselves. So actually, this is really great because this is kind of telling us um, how hard access to mail-in voting is. So, um, uh, so uh, DT says... I think you can't see links on your iPad. Oh, DT, you've been sending links. Um, yeah, I guess that's what's happening. I'm not seeing the links. I'm just seeing like blinks where you have the links. So that makes a lot of sense. So actually, so DT sent along spottheebox.us and help confirm where USPS collection boxes are usable across the country. This is amazing. Tap or click on a mailbox location to record record a decommission or functional box get started uh, i do not want you to know my location um unsurveyed box present removed out of order so i wonder where they are getting um so it seems like there's a lot of unsurveyed ones and i would love to know where they get that data so there is there's at least this down here. There's some. Wow, this is this is an amazing amount. I wonder how many how many boxes this represents. So there's like a small removed one there. Let me go and look at like information on this so if all collect correction validation data added to this project is contributed and available on a cc uh, creative common zero basis um i wish there's a little bit more information about where um 200k like where they're getting the unsurveyed box like the blue dots from there are over 200k usps collection boxes across the us are being removed moved or locked at ahead of the upcoming 2020 election ah freedom of information act data dump of all usps collection boxes and also users to ground truth whether their local USPS collection boxes have been removed, rendered unusable, or have remained unchanged. Um, includes the data file includes two hundred and five thousand USPS collection boxes. And then, this is amazing. Um, so. We are also discussing this project on Slack. So I might try and join that later, um, but it certainly does look like not as many of them have been verified as of right now. Okay, I think this is even amazing from a standpoint of just like having all of these mailboxes. So um, it's great to know that this exists. So actually, I'm going to start writing down some ideas. So uh, from an USPS perspective, so spot the box has... Um, kind of uh, mailbox locations and then it's trying to crowdsource status on them so there's that um, and then if we can go back to, if we go back to this one um, then um, I'm gonna kind of keep reading through this so 25 states voters will need to procure an application themselves and in seven states voters still need a reason beyond the virus to vote absentee oh that means many voters 
In these states, we need to vote in person at a polling place, barring any last-minute rule changes. Oh, so when when it when it was saying that excuse was required, it meant an excuse um, other than the virus. So that's New York, um, and Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, South Carolina, um, Indiana. So I really appreciate the way that they kind of broke this down in terms of like kind of like access. So I'm going to write that down too. So even with mail-in voting, there's kind of like a levels, uh, there's kind of levels of ease of access, I guess. That's kind of like, um, at the easiest is, um, there's seven states, was it oh, nine states, nine states that just automatically, automatically, uh, mail the ballot. And so that's nine of the states. And then there's, um, out of those 34 states that will allow for coronavirus as a reason, um, nine states will automatically mail uh, application for, so you can see this is what I'm writing down, application for absentee voting. So that's nine states. And then um, there's 25 states that you still have to um, have to request uh, application. for absentee, and that's 25 states. And then finally, there's, was it seven or nine? Seven, seven, which makes sense because that will add up to 50. <laughs> and, and then there's seven that, uh, still need to have reason beyond coronavirus to vote absentee, and that's seven states. Um, and, ooh, hi, Bruno. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Thank you so much for uh, joining the workshop and all, now joining the stream. Um, and DT says, uh, just for everyone, um, oh, thank you so much for uh, helping with the links, DT. Um, today, because I'm managing, like, the chat via uh, my iPad, it's a little bit harder for me to drop the links in uh, from my laptop. So very much appreciate that. Thank you so much for having my back, DT. Um, and Anna says, when they say excuse required, does that mean an, an excuse not to vote? Um, so when they say that, they mean um, they uh, require an excuse for not uh, voting in person. So like not going into the uh, polling station to vote in person. So, um, yeah, so uh, in, in uh, America, there's uh, you can mail in your vote. You, you can mail in your uh, ballot. Um, but then depending on which states, um, kind of the details of um, how is different. And so California, where I'm in, will just um, mail my ballot uh, to me so that I can mail it back in. Um, and that's really, really great uh, um, because then I don't have to go 
can line up in a uh, line up at like right like maybe outside of a polling station um, during the pandemic. But there are some states where it's not um, it's not as great because um, like these the ones that says the excuse required these are the ones where if you want to be able to vote via mail um, as an um, then you have to provide an excuse as to why you cannot go to the police station. And these are the states that will not accept um, coronavirus as an excuse. So, oh, yes. Thank you so much for answering that, DT. Um, uh, and Bruno asks, in New York Times, that's where Rich Harris was working. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, it, uh, I don't know where he is now, but definitely Rich Harris worked there for a bit. Um and let's see the math toast says i wonder what i wonder when these decisions whether the virus counts as a reason to request absentee were made yeah i don't know um i wonder if this article will give us more information on that so oh uh well i guess i guess that uh probably answers our question with that um Let's see. Several states have made changes for the primaries, are keeping them in place for the general election. Um, and overall, 27 states in D.C. have in some way expanded voter access um, for the 2020 election. Let's see. In, in some states that maintain relatively strict rules, individual counties have undertaken similar efforts. Um, so changes to voting in fall 2020. So states that made changes, uh, sending ballots to all voters is these. Um, sending absentee ballot applications to all voters, allowing no excuse absentee voting. So that means um, like if someone wants to apply for absentee voting, they don't have to provide any excuse. Um, so these are the ones that uh, allow citing COVID. These are the ones that uh, have. Oh, uh, thank you. Is this? It says anonymous cheer cheered. Thank you so much. Um, and other changes to these absentee votings. And these are the ones that made no changes. So, okay. So these were the ones that. Um, were already already had these policies so i wonder what happened with south carolina because they changed um made changes to ease absentee voting but still uh require excuse it seems like it still requires an excuse for um absentee voting so let's see what the note is connecticut so connecticut delaware and massachusetts have authorized absentee voting for all voters and will also mail absentee ballot applications. So um, I guess that's kind of redundant information here. I'm not quite sure why that note was made. Um, okay. Made it easier for people to vote by mail saw a higher turnout than states that made fewer changes. The states that have held presidential primaries 31 saw an increase in turnout compared with 2016. Of those, 18 had sent either ballots or ballot applications to all voters ahead of the primaries. Then, and then, let's see, let's decipher this together. Um, turnout in presidential primaries and caucuses. Ooh, I see. Okay, change in primary turnout from 2016 to 2020. Ooh, I appreciate this. So it's this middle line is the same. I'm um, going to the right is higher turnout. To the left is lower turnout. Um, and it says uh, green ones are the ones that sent ballots or ballot applications. Um, and then let's see, what's the y-axis? So y-axis is percentage that voted absentee in 2020 primary. Um, more voted, so going up is more voted by mail, and going down is fewer voted by mail. Um, 
interesting. So this is basically like a scatter plot, but then um just kind of made it's it's kind of like a scatter plot, but like actually like gridded. So that's very interesting of like a visualization. And um, and so it's trying to show like in general, it seems like there were higher turnout in general. And then you can see that there's more in this kind of quadrants than more voted. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure if I find this visualization the most effective. Um, certainly, I guess, is used to support the previous statement over here. I guess it's like very helpful if you want to dig into like which exact states um, did what. Yeah, maybe it's not as effective on me just because like I wasn't trying to look for like a state by state breakdown, but I really like how cleanly it's done. Seven states that have had primaries are not shown in a chart because vote by mail data is not available. Of those, Minnesota and Wyoming had overall increases in turnout. Arkansas, Massachusetts, Missouri, New Hampshire, and Tennessee had decreases in turnout. Okay, let's see. Oh, I feel like this is very, very, um, very convincing of a visual. And I feel like it's extremely convincing because at like at just one glance um i know what it's trying to say which is that um for this one this visual i feel like is very simple and very effective and it's basically saying that like um the ones that have very likely to be republic republican the states that are very likely to be republican are those um that are requiring excuses for applying to um, absentee voting and um, also I just want to say like I always really appreciate I know this is like a pretty standard thing but I always really appreciate when like an article uses the cons same consistent um, color scheme throughout and um, and trains you at the very beginning like what each of the colors are and even though so even though like you know it still provides the legend which again for redundancy I very much appreciate but um by now, because it's been using the exact same colors, I don't even need the, um, I don't even need the legend. I just like at a glance know what each of the colors represent. Very much appreciate that detail. So yeah, you can see like the ones that are very likely to be Republican have five out of the seven states that are um, requiring excuses for absentee voting, and then the toss up. There's Texas that's in the toss up. In New York, that is um, likely Democratic. It's very interesting. Um, so this is for the ele 2020 Electoral College. So let's see. So I definitely, um, I know we only went through it and looked at the visuals together, but I'm definitely gonna go, probably go back and read this um, article in more detail after this. But um, that I felt like gave me a really great uh, overview, like a high level overview. Um, and Utsby, <laughs> Utsby says, I'm curious what site COVID means, site that you have it or are symptomatic? Site that you are in a high risk group, site that you're just not happy with crowds right now. That's a great question. Um, and uh, my understanding is that they mean site COVID as a reason for not wanting to go where it's crowded. So the very last thing you said, um, but uh, I don't want to make that statement because I don't think I you know, read into every single one of the states and their policies. Um, but I, that's what I would guess. Bruno says, I must admit, U.S. democracy is harder to understand than, yeah, I agree. Um, this is why even after having lived here for so long, I'm just very confused by the whole election process. Um, yeah, I feel like been, I've lived here since I was 10. Um, and in these 20 years, I feel like there was, um, 
a very uh, blissfully ignorant um, many years where I uh, didn't have to pay, I, where I feel like I didn't pay so much attention to politics or the election, and I only paid enough to kind of like vote. Um, and uh, now I feel like a civic duty to really pay attention and really try and understand, which is probably for the better. Um, so probably for the better that I pay attention and trying to figure it out. Um, so DT says, Utsubi, or if you are self-quarantining because you might have been in contact with it. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, I feel like maybe I'm, my guess is that like, if you just use it as an excuse for, I just don't want to be in a crowd. But like it probably depends uh, state by state. I also feel like it was quite interesting that one of the graphics was saying that um, there are some counties that have taken matters into their own hand and um, that this article isn't covering, but like is potentially um, an interesting thing. So um, let me note that down also. So I'm going into my iPad um, and I'm saying for some counties, Um, also, uh, making, was it, was it saying making their own changes? Um, some counties also, uh, I'm just going to say making their own changes. Ah, <laughs> Bruno says, the more so that I'm French, where one person is equal to one vote. Simple. Yes, I appreciate that. This whole electoral college thing, um, never fully understood it. Uh, yeah. Um, but I have opinions. <laughs> um but I don't want to say those opinions because it's the opinions of a person that don't fully understand it. Um, and so it's like not fully verified or grounded. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this is the other one I really want to go through together. Um, it's the Washington Post. Postal Service warns 46 states their voters could be disenfranchised by delayed mail-in ballots. And so I was skimming this a little bit earlier. And it was saying um, that uh, this was a warning that was uh, uh, this was a warning given even before uh, what's his name um, was appointed. Louis DeJoy was appointed, um, and it was saying that let's see letters range from endorsing a mail-in ballot plan to a heightened warning that. U.S. EPS delivery standards cannot meet state deadlines. Um, in states with a narrow warning, the concern applied to a limited number of voters. And so it seems like there's 8 million in 1, 2, 3, 4 states that says no objection, 40 million that says narrow warning, and 186 million voters that says heightened warning. Um, so yeah, so... It says, note, USPS expressed difficulty in assessing D.C.'s and Vermont's deadlines, which had not been finalized. I see. For Alaska, USPS expressed heightened concern about the statewide absentee ballot program, but no concerns about the deadlines for all mail elections, elections county officials could choose to impl implement instead. Um, and so my understanding of this graphic is that uh, the USPS... Uh, was analyzing each state's uh, mail-in, um, I guess, uh, m I guess maybe the timelines for uh, the mail-in ballots. So, um, my my guess for this is like, um, and please correct me if I'm completely wrong because I really haven't um, read into this as much. Is like, I guess for each state, there is. A date that, uh, and probably like a uh, when the mail in ballots are going to be mailed to the citizens, and then um, a deadline by which um, the ballots need to be mailed back 
to the county offices for counting um or is it county office i don't even know where the ballots are counted oh my god um but that uh that those ballots may or may not be um given that timeline may or may not be delivered in time um for counting so that is my understanding of that visualization and Bruno says some countries find people who don't vote. Wow. Um, DT sent a link, um, and I'm guessing it is a link to this uh, uh, article. So thank you so much for sending that. Um, and Bruno says, well, midnight, time to quit the screen. I'll look at final result tomorrow. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's almost. Uh, wow, it's almost three. Um, Okay, so let's, huh, this, is there not many, oh, there we go. So, postal workers, meanwhile, are concerned over the ongoing removal of mail sorting machines in areas that project to be hotly contested in the presidential race. Actually, you know what would be, uh, what would be really interesting is if we could, let's see, Um, so postal service reduction and sorting capacity in pieces of mail per hour. So if we compare this graphic side by side with the ones we saw, yeah, so this that we saw. So it kind of looks like my laptop and small screens. I'm having such a hard time <laughs> trying to arrange everything. Okay, okay. All right. So yeah, look at that. Um, so this one says LA and it looks like some Bay Area. Um, so those uh, is going, those are being affected. Although on here, those, this is California is ballots mailed. So um, I guess that might mean that even with the ballots mailed, um, those ballots might not be delivered on time. Um, Houston, so, I do feel like there is sort of a trend where if you overlap the two maps, um, you can see like Houston, there's some big bubbles and Houston, or sorry, Houston, Texas has some big bubbles and Texas is one of the oranges where it's like excuse required. Um, and uh, Florida has quite a few of them. And Tennessee, there's also, it seems like that's New York. Yeah, New York um, is also orange over here. A lot of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Um, and this looks like Ohio um, and Michigan. So yeah, so um, I think there would be very interesting things um, we might find if we like overlap the two. I really want to understand where, let's try and dig into where and how they got this information. So, um, so this one, it says source USPS, US Postal Service um, and the Washington Post. Let's see if there's like a methodology section or something that we can take a look at. Hmm, so no methodology section. Um, that's going to be a little bit hard. Um, previous version of the map showing sorting machine locations that accompanies this article has several points that were incorrectly located. The map has been corrected. So I really want to know um, how they got this data.
Mm, okay, so I'm gonna try and go back to the beginning because I thought I saw something. And let's see. So, okay. Even if people follow all of their state's election rules, the pace of postal service delivery may disqualify their votes. Um, decommission 10% of the postal service's sorting machines has sparked widespread concern that slowdowns will only worsen. Oh, so the ballot warnings issued at the end of July from Thomas J. Marshall um, and obtained through a records request by the Washington Post were planned before the appointment. Okay. I wonder if I can look for the Washington Post's like GitHub repo or something. Accelerator says, when you are working on a visualization project, what tools do you use to organize your ideas and research? Honestly, uh, my iPad. <laughs> so this is why I've been kind of writing things on, down on my iPad. And um, so when I'm just like looking around um, and trying to find the data, I'll just like jot down like ideas and notes um, on my iPad. And then um, after I get my data, uh, I might like put it into like a observable notebook um, for uh, analyzing the data. But as of right now, like when I'm not even sure if I have anything, I'll just like jot some ideas down on um, on my uh, iPad. So Washington Post indeed has a GitHub. It's data police shootings, oh gosh. Oh, that's right. Um, I wonder, Arc Publishing, Docker, Jenkins. I do wonder if their USPS data is available. Washington Post to GitHub USPS. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh, Washington Post investigated. Hmm. Helicopter protests, nursing homes. Hmm. I feel like this, along with the spot the box together, is very valuable. Um, and I want to overlay that with like, um, past uh, how, how that area voted in the past and its demographics. Um, so we are up on our hour. Um, so uh, I'm glad we were able to go through what we did. Um, I feel like I have more questions <laughs> um, now than when I started, but I certainly think that was a really great starting point um, that like gives me more um, ideas. And I think it's that I want to look more into um, more about the USPS and where to potentially get um, this piece of information. I'm really, really I'm really interested in this piece of information. Um, and I feel like what I need to grok more is um, what does it mean to be reducing the sorting capacity by 300K or more? Like, what would that mean um, as we near the election? So I think that's something that I need to grok. Um, but I'm glad we were able to get through this together. Um, thank you for sitting through this with me um, as I try to learn more for myself. 
and hopefully it was uh, somehow uh, helpful or interesting. Um, and let's see, uh, Utsby says there's a Vice article with a USPS document on the sorting capacity embedding. Uh, can I post links? Yes, please. Um, I just am on my iPad and I can't see the links right now. Um, DT says they have a link to a PDF with all the letters from the USPS to the state. Ooh. Um, Hannah says, would the US Postal Service website possibly have the data you want? Um, let's see. Uh, what should I Google? Um, sorry, Utsby, if you could um, send the link over just like... Uh, just like replace a dot with like a written dot or something like that because right now my uh, iPad is like uh, seeing the link and then just like replacing it as something empty. So, USPS, uh, it's always a little bit harder to like search for data within a website. So, let's see. Hmm. Government services. Let's see. Forms and publications. USPS service updates. Ooh, service alerts. Um, ooh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you to both DT and Utsby. So I'm going to do vice.com slash enus slash article slash pkyp4k slash internal USPS documents outline plans to Hubble mail sorting. And hopefully I spelled that all correctly. I did not. <laughs> Um, USPS documents outline plans to Hubble mail sorting, PKY, PKYV, 4K. I swear I did that correctly. Okay, I'm going to Google instead. Vice internal USPS. Oh. <sighs> so, I'm going to do Vice. I swear that's what I wrote. Hubble mail sorting. This will slow mail processing. 20% of letter sorting machines he uses around the country before revising the plan weeks later to closer to 15% of all machines, meaning 502 will be taken out of service. So that's 502 and it's saying, and then Washington Post said that there's how many that were already taken out? Then how many? So at least 671 mail sorting machines have been removed. And then this vice one says that 15% of all machines. So actually I'm very confused now because this Washington Post one says that 600 plus has been removed. And this one by vice, when is this? August 14th says 502 will be taken out of service. Um, so I don't know what that means uh, for the numbers. Like, is it that 600 plus has already been taken out of service and then another 500 is going to be taken out still? Um, So in May, USPS planned to remove a total of 969 sorting machines out of the 4,900 it had in operation as of February for all types of letters and flat mail. The vast majority of them, 746 out of 3,765 in use, were delivery bar code sorters, the type that sort letters, postcards, ballots, ballots, marketing mail, and other similarly sized pieces. But a subsequent document distributed to union officials in mid-June said 502 of those machines 
would be removed from facilities. Hmm. A little bit confused by this article. Okay. I will be sure to read this also. But I really, really want to know um, the specific places. I really, really want this data set that they have. Um, so we will see if I can do some more digging for this. Um, Anna says, it is definitely interesting to see your process of analyzing, collecting, and organizing data on the topic. Thank you so much. Let's be says, the dog, oh, the dog is at the bottom. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the dog is at the bottom. Oh, got it, got it. Oh, wow. Okay, so let me see if I can expand this. <laughs> Silly me. Equipment reduction. Capital Metro Eastern Great Lakes. A F I wonder what so Cap Eastern Great Lakes okay. Oh, so this is kind of aggregated. So maybe this is kind of hard to see. So let me try and make it bigger. And so this is saying This is an aggregation of all these different types of sorting machines, I'm guessing, for each of these kind of like uh, areas of America. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So this, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Utsby for for linking this, yeah. This seems like, this seems fine. It's it's not fine, it's not quite. Actually, I think this is quite detailed. Yeah, I need to look into this more of trying to see I'm trying to see like oh gosh oh no what happened I'm trying to see like because it's it kind of looks either like it kind of looks like either city names or county names but then some of them seems to be areas like mid Florida PNDC so I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, cleaning involved in this one wow so um, Anna says, well, I wonder why they're removing sorting machines. Surely they will want more machines to prepare for the elections. Um, Accelerator says, feel the same way. This kind of syntactic, syntactic reading is great. And um, Gilliam says, uh, there could be a case about obsolescence or route optimization or a number of factors, but the timing sure is weird. So totally agree with Gilliam. <laughs> Utsby says, enjoy parsing the tables. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, PDF. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that is definitely very helpful um so let me think about what I want to do with uh the information I have and then hopefully I'll be able to update you on Friday so on Friday I was thinking of either doing this um I continue doing this or um to uh I was thinking of open sourcing one of my projects. So I was kind of, I was thinking of writing some documentation about like um, how to potentially contribute data to it. So I'm still kind of up in the air about which way to go. Look, love to know, um, I would love to know your thoughts uh, on if you want to continue with this or if you want to see kind of like, I guess, me open sourcing a project and, and the project that I'm thinking of open sourcing is uh, this one um, that I created. Uh, uh, it's a 
kind of a visual kind of simulation slash game um, about uh, the way that a pandemic might spread through a community. And um, right now the data is only for the US. So I was thinking of open sourcing it so that if anybody from other countries wanted to contribute data for their country, then it'd be an easier process. Um, so that's what I was thinking about potentially working on on Friday. So yeah, please let me know which one you prefer. Um, and then uh, for any updates on these streams, um, I usually tweet about them. So my Twitter handle is the same as my Twitch handle. And for any updates, uh, if you have any feedback on what you would like to see, um, please, uh, you can contact me there. Uh, but for today, I think that's uh, more than I was thinking of covering. So this is great. Thank you so much for joining me on uh, this uh, exploration um, and uh, Accelerator said plus one for open sourcing a project. DT says the direct link to the PDF. Um, oh yes. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. I hope you're having or had a great Wednesday and I will see you on Friday. Bye bye.